shall I use the microphone and just, uh, I think it's I think it, no, you can be heard. Yeah. Okay. Be heard. Yeah. Uh, Salam alaikum. This is our third session today. We talk about post conflict community building. Post war. And after the war, the conflict happened in Syria, in Yemen, in Somalia, in Afghanistan. How can we rebuild our community? We'll start with this one first. On the this one? Yeah. Can you make it bigger? Yes. We found when people come out of conflict and to build in the process of peace, the community sometimes they are very busy to talk about something which could be done at a later stage. Particularly people could be looking at constitution. Okay? Constitution, which uh, no constitution, state constitution, which could be divisive. Most of the constitution are written, some of them are good 80 to 85 or 90 percent suiting the people, and 5 to 10 percent could be suiting special leader or special government. So we might re edit the 10 percent of the Constitution, without spending a lot of things to start from scratch again. This pyramid in front of you talks about uh, what's the bottom one? Uh, something which I wrote maybe eight years ago or six years ago or seven years ago what needs to be done? I'll mention all of them one by one, then I explain. First of all, we have to look after the primary education as a bedrock with vocational training and vocational education. Then, second point, look at uh, housing or residential places where people can live. Thirdly, it is microfinance or small business could be created. Number four, building the local market from the level of village to the level of the city. Number one, two, three, four. Number five is health. Number six is infrastructure. Number seven is community building. At the same time, we have to look at parallel coordination, communication, networking, and building partnership on the right hand side. On the left hand side, if you can look at the top one, which is called culture, values, faith, family, and manner. So, I've got six or seven points in the structure of the pyramid. You have got communication, networking, complementarity, education as well as building partnership on the left hand side, culture, values, faith, family, and money. Did you understand what I'm talking about? You want to discuss anything? Go one by one from the bottom. First of all, I came out of a conflict. I cannot run the education system as it is run in a state, a stable state, which is primary, secondary, university, and others. They have to look at two things. First of all, of all is to have the primary education for everyone, every child, to find, to fight illiteracy. Then promote vocational training 
and vocational education. Because vocational training and vocational education will produce skillful young people who will be able to earn money. Who I might not have as a newly born government after the conflict the luxury of have the budget to build the education system like the stable state education system. Clear? You want to ask anything about this? Yeah, you want to come out from the conflict now? Now the war is over in Syria. What will you do? We have got 2 million plus of young children are not in the education system. What to do with them? Who miss the boat? Give them a skillful job. Train them to do the job. Because instead of losing the whole generation, at least we can train those people to be productive and different kind of vocational training and vocational skills. So, um, how so we train them? We can help help you know, through simple organization. But organization. How, how can you make sure that they will also you know stay in the country? Well, migration is something not in your control. Yeah. Immigration is something not in your control. Internal displacement is not something in your control. People will stay in the country, actually, if there is a job for them, if there is service for them, for their health, education, water and sanitation. You cannot guarantee that the post-war will allow most of the displaced people to stay in the country. There is something not in your hand. But what's in your hand is to build civil society organization and this should be the priority, which is the, voc the, the vocational training parallel with the primary education. Okay. Primary education to kill the illiteracy and vocational training to create jobs. And in all the different kinds of job profession, which you can talk about agriculture, industry, all these kinds of things which they'll be able to become skillful labor within three to six months. And this will enable them to create jobs or to find jobs themselves. This is the first step. Is it clear? Yeah. After a war, for example, which area or which field are you orient the training of these people? This is now in any city or any district which has displacement because the number of people affected by the war could be hundreds of thousands or millions. Some of the children could be at the age of 12, 14, 15 and they have never been to the school for the last five, six years. Okay? So, you can do the literacy program as well as do the vocational training. One generation, to be very honest, who might lose the education, the, the proper education of one generation. But we need to change such a generation into a skillful community workers. We cannot afford to talk about big projects while we have no fund for it. Cannot afford that. So let us look at how much money we have and how much the capacity of our civil society organization, which can train them, the children, to become skillful workers. So if we are prioritizing the education, like what you can see it now, primary education and vocational training. Is it clear? Second point to look at is what kind of reconstruction we need. 
The construction means housing. Do we need to get a big budget in billions of dollars to start building the housing? Or what? When we come out of a conflict, we will not have a strong government. The more money we get, the more corruption we have. Because people don't have any system to control their performance, unfortunately. So my view, our view is, we are not ready to take the big chunk of money which is in billions of dollars. But this will create an ultimate corrupting system. Since there is no strong civil society organization or sector, and there is no strong trained civil uh, government in the country. So we can do the shelter on a temporary basis, like report a cabin, for the coming, at least for four to five or six years. They will be able to build a stronger civil society sector, as well as uh, a stronger, able government and municipalities. It's clear. In these first five, six years, my view is not to receive the big amount of money which is included, billions and billions of dollars, which might lead to ultimate corruption. Because of the lack of control in the government spending or on the uh, lack of ability or weak, 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 weak civil society. Point number three from day one, we should encourage the small projects. Okay? Yani, what do I mean by small projects? Which sometimes lending to uh, families, microfinance, like livelihood. Because we want every member of the society to be able to produce something and to earn money. It's clear. So this kind of lending or uh, microfinance or livelihood should be a trend where several side sector and organization or the government offices train the smaller family to make their own local businesses. So to, to actually create the local economy. Local economy should be done by the local people, whether it's in agriculture, industrial, or other basis. Number five, to build local markets. I saw quite a few, or we saw quite a few projects done by the same organization, which is like building villages, 800, 500, 700, 1,000 houses. But they fail to create a local market next to them. And some of those organizations build about 40 or 50 shops inside the village. When we had a discussion, 40 jobs, well, 40 shops means 40 families out of 800 families. We should have built next to the village a big open market like the bazaar you can find in Turkey and other places. Even in UK, we have the Sunday and Saturday open market where families come and sell. People come and sell. They rent the table by the day. Not by the week, not by the month. Not a chaos, not a shop. So when you look at here, let me stand up.
to accommodate the education according to our needs and according to our resources and according to what we need to create because a generation will be lost, unfortunately. At least have to change this generation into a skillful individual. Then construction should not be including the mega project, which called spending the billions of dollars where you have no stock at civil society sector or no strong government. Number three, which is the microfinance or livelihood for every family and empower them and enable them to create the job for themselves. While we are doing this, we have to start investing in building the local market. All these are homemade. There's nothing important from outside. Everything is locally. Animal production, or what you call it, uh, livestock, agriculture, handcraft, some industrial thing, food, and all these kind of things. Like local market and local small enterprise. The top down, after that, the top. Yeah. No. Then we look at the health. What kind of health we need? Do we need general health or need to go to the hospital? It depends on how much budget that we have. The least we have to find is primary care health. Child and maternity. These are essential. Because children are there and delivery are there every other day. Then, talk about when we are stabilizing the society to build the infrastructure, like the roads and the other things in the society. Then at the top, this will lead to community building. So community building is starting, can I go to the bottom? First is state, uh, I mean primary education, question of training, temporary housing, Microfinance, livelihood, local market, primary health care, local, what do you call it, uh, uh, local infrastructure, and this will build the community. This is the first five to ten years of building community from post conflict into this stage. At the meantime, we have to create the philosophy of this. What does this mean? While we are doing this building up, have to do the coordination, networking, communication, building partnership between us inside the society. You got it? Yes. When you say five, five, between five and ten years, it's yeah. based on the experience that you had in different countries? Well, it is not less than five years whether you have experience or not. Some countries, like if I give you a stable country, like Malaysia, they were one of the uh, weakest or uh, most backward country uh, at, the, uh, at the late 60s and beginning of 70s. And when the government came, it took them about 22 years, or 20 years, to build the country from bottom up. The first thing they have done is to invest in education because it was a stable country. They have a stable government elected, they have started to build from bottom up. It took about 20 years. If you look at the example of Turkey, they came out from certain stage to what we see nowadays to be a leading member of the NATO, producing all what. But this took about 20 years. And let us look at the example of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. Mm -hmm. Seven and seven and one. In my own view, if I take the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam uh, situation, it's 14 years. Seven bad years and seven good years. So nothing less than that to a prophet. 
So for us, if you want post conflict and you have yeah, the semi stable government and become stable government, it will take 15 to 25 years to reach this. Okay. This is if there's no other conflict happen afterwards. Yes, of course. And the, and a parallel to that is you have to believe in networking, communication, participation, partnership. I can't do this one. Can I zoom? Coordinating? Education. Okay? Yes, I think it's education. On the other side, we have to look after culture, values, faith, family, and money. Because these are something should be taught to every member of society. You cannot do it alone. Not because your district is far more richer than my districts. That means that you don't complement with me. Don't network and communicate. We have to share the cake together. When we sit down as a country which came out post-conflict, I've got 20 districts, or I don't know how many, 25 or 100 or 200 municipalities. We have to put the resources on the same table, together. The rich give to the poor. Maybe you might be rich in water, maybe rich in agriculture, maybe rich in livestock, but this is mineral. I may be rich in human resources, in education. This can to be actually a roadmap for all of us, and we work together. Not actually to be isolated. Like I say that the capital should take everything. No. The capital, as well as others, should share the resources together. That's what we look at this. Networking, communication, participation, partnership, and education. And this one, somebody else will look at to, to, to maintain our culture, to maintain our values, to maintain our faith, to maintain the most important part of our community, which is the unit, which is the family, and to maintain our mind. See, this will be looking like on the side, like the climate, inside such a climate, will be able to build the strike from bottom up. If you don't have the right climate, the tree might not grow. All these nice things could be electric, could be just theoretical. If you don't have networking, communication, partnership, and others. And if you don't believe in the value of family, morality and faith and culture. So these two groups create around the society the atmosphere or the climate that will let the process of building the community to go smoothly. Because you cannot say that it's only my district, it's only my city, it's only my people. You cannot do this. Of everybody to put the resources together to enable them to go up. So, with the two examples I mentioned, even if we talk about Singapore, Singapore took their independence in the mid 60s from uh, Malaysia. Okay? And they invested in education for the child, children's education. And the Prime Minister said every child is a gifted individual. This was the respect of every born child, male and female. Singapore is just a port. Now it's one of the strongest economies. If you look at the other one, in Africa, it's called Rwanda. Rwanda, 1994-95, lost nearly one million people in the conflict, between the tribal conflict. Nowadays, it's one of the fastest growing economy in Africa. But from 1994-95 till now, it took about nearly 25 years. 
When we look at this, we find that in Rwanda, they said no more to talk about the conflict which happened before. Finish, it's gone. Don't open the discussion. Let us objectively focus on how to build the local economy and they change it. The language from French to English. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the four examples, two are from Muslim majority countries, two are from non Muslim majority countries. And both of them create the stability of their own countries. It took them about at least 15 20 years. Mm -hmm. That's why when I say about this one, it has to be, we have to create a climate to enable us to go from bottom up. A climate where the current people living in this side of conflict will take it, will suffer to build the community. When you have weak government but support of the local community. And they keep de de developing themselves all the time. It's clear. If you want to ask any question, this is I, I, I draw this drawing in I was in in, in, a, in a Quran recitation competition in Riyadh in 2017, and I draw this one when I was there, 2016, something like this. This is the air, the pyramid of Bernie community. Okay? There was another drawing. The other one. Yeah. This one. How we spend the money on what sector? Okay? This is three years. Five years, ten years, fifteen years. Okay? The same. This is the society. This is the bottom one is the humanitarian response project. The middle one is building the state institution, the top one is building the community. And say it again. The bottom one is in the first, let's talk about relief program. In the first three years, 70% of the fund should be on a material response. Then keep going down to 30%, to 20%, to 10%. Three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years. But you maintain the 10% even after 15, 15 years. But you always need some strategic reserve for a material response. If you talk about building the state institution, we said 70-80% in, in the first year is for humanitarian response. Here, from year 5, 20-30% of the budget should be spent on state institution. They keep going up to 40-50%, give back to 40-40%. This is where you build the state institution, the body. If you talk about development and rehabilitation, it goes from 20 to 30% in the first three years, 30 to 40% in five years, after five years, and 30 to 40%, 10 to 20, uh, sorry, uh, 10 years, and 30 to 40% in uh, 15 years. And it's clear or, or, or confusing. And here, if you look at here, the first three years, 70 to 80% is response, 
and 20-30% community building. Okay? After five years, 30 to 40% MITI response, 20 to 30% state institution building, 30 to 40% actually community building and development. 10 years, 10 to 20% MITI response, 45% state institution building, 30 to 40% is community building. After 15 years, This is 10%. Yes. 10%, 40 to 40%, 30 to 40%. It changes with the time of maturity of the community. Like here, 7 to 80%, 20 to 30%, this is 100%. Here, 30 to 40%, 20 to 30%, 30 to 40%. Could be 100% as well. You can collect all of them. Then here, 10 to 20 percent, 40 to 50 percent, and 10 to 40 percent. Next 100 percent. And the same. Anyway. And on these three passages or road go together, you will build within 15 years this site. It's clear. Mm. But you mentioned that sometimes it goes beyond 15 years. It depends. But so minimum 15 years, up up 25 years. So I took my reference from the four countries which I mentioned before, okay? mm. which is Rwanda, uh, Singapore, Malaysia. Malaysia, and Turkey. I took it from the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, 14 years, but he was a prophet. I take it from the message of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam up to 23 years. And even up to 23 years as a prophet, the community was not built yet. The community started to be built after, after Abu Bakr. Because Omar started to build all the state institutions, including the OE. You know the one? The one is What's the one in the French? The one is uh, the place where we sit together, no? No, no, no. It's mm -hmm. the one that went like uh, a city institution. We started to build Battle Mad, uh -huh. and from Battle Mad, the first came. So if we talk about at the time of the Prophet Hassan, it's 25 years when we started to have the shape of the community. The first 10 years, was in Mecca, Dorma. People have been taught how to learn the message. Yeah. Then, the second 13 years was a conflict. Then, stability came after the conquest of Mecca, in the year 20 or 21. Then, the state became fragile again when the people stopped paying the cat at the time of Abak. Mm -hmm. The stability came and the Omar sought to make the one, the one which is the government place after 25 years. So in the state, in building out of the state of Islam, took about 25 years till Omar started to create the Dawawin, which is a state institution. Okay? This work, this one, as a very, very clear example in the middle of the desert, mm -hmm. from scratch. Okay? Yusuf came to a strong country. Yusuf in Egypt, mm -hmm. salam, he came to a state which has an economy, mm -hmm. that's a structure. It did not take him 25 years. Because there was a state in Egypt, and he used the state institution to strengthen the state. In the case of other countries, it took about 20 23 years. It is clear. Yeah. You can ask questions if you want. So, building community is not something that happens like this. 
You can say, we won the war. Okay, fine. Winning the war is different to building a community. Winning the war absolutely different to building a community, to building a state. In the cases of in the cases of Britain and the Second World War, the Prime Minister of the UK, his name was Churchill, isn't it? He won the war, but he was not elected to build the country. They elected someone else. Even in France, Charles de Gaulle was the one who won the war, and then in the uh, referendum in the 60s, he failed. The war could be won by fighters, but the state could be built by builders. There's a difference. The mentality of the one who built the blocks and the mentality of one who fight the war. Not because I want the war, that means I can build. Very rarely it happens. You can be a really nice warrior, but a bad builder. Because it's not your, your actually expertise. Yeah. It's not your expertise. When you look at uh, Hazrat Omar and Hazrat Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr said, if they prevent me from taking this small part of the zakat, I will fight them forever. Because he wanted, with his vision, to keep the deen intact, one piece. When the Muslim won this war of a mortal deen, then Omar came on a more stable situation to build the state institution based on Baitul Mal, which is from Zakat. The only institution in the five pillars of Islam is Zakat. This is what we will talk about it in the second session. Because that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Sheikh uh, al Qurdab said, put in Zakat expenditure Al Amin Alayhim. You need to have the people who collect Zakat to pay money for them. Okay? Because they are going to make the research on the rich people and the poor people. Then they are going to collect the money. Then they are going to spend the money. They are going to evaluate the expenditure. That's why it became an institution as one of the five pillars of Islam. The only institution in the five pillars of Islam is the cat. Hajj is personal. Fasting is personal. Prayer is personal. Shahada is personal. But zakat is community. That's why Allah put al amin alayh to enable the state to build the institution of zakat. So when we look at the 15 to 25 years, this is the feasible. If there is no counter revolution, if there is no collapse afterwards, because from 15 to 25 years, this actually the thought. When you come out of conflict, like there is a war in Bosnia and, and Syria now. You have to keep busy. Yeah. You know what to do? You have to keep the local community very busy doing your project. What's my project? Is microfinance, is local market, is uh, what you call it? Uh, literacy, primary education, vocational training and temporary shelter. Because the people who live through the conflict for 10 to 15 years, if they believe in you as a leader, it will not make any difference if they stay again for about 5, 6, 7 years in temporary shelter. If you are the right leader leading the community. But with the climate, that we mentioned the climate, networking, communication, partnership, participation, then on the other side, the value, the culture, the morality, and the family as a well. It's clear.
So don't ever be excited that the war is over, that the job is done. No. The war is over, the job is more difficult. The war is over, the job is more difficult. Because everyone had a high level of adrenaline during the war. But once peace been signed, everyone would love to have the share of the victory. And you don't have money for it. So unless and until you make the community busy looking at your projects, they will make you the project. That's why leader, like yourself, I will mention the first, the second, the second session. Leader has to make people, or has to let people buy or through their own vision, through their own projects. Otherwise, the people will create millions of projects and they'll ask you to fulfill it for them. I think we need to make some coffee for all of us. <laughs> when this brother is done with the wedding man. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to bring back. Is the sisters are there? Mm -hmm. They're gone home. No, oh, they're here. Huh? They're here. Yeah. I just need to discuss this uh, this two talk uh, this topic. So sure. Bismillah. Go on. Um, I have a question. Yes. So this is the plan, right? This is how we look ahead of, okay, this is what we need to do. But sometimes we have some challenges. But of course, there will be challenges. We have human, I don't know, maybe a new crisis. Yeah. Again. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, corruption, I don't yeah. know. So how, how do you cope with it? How the plan is resilient? If you have a clear plan, okay, with this resources, and the community believes in you as a leader, they will be able to help you. But the leader in which field? Political, political leader, humanitarian leader? Of course, not political leader. Look here, I'm talking, not, not, not talking about humanitarian leader, it's political leader. Okay. Okay? Political leaders have to be transparent. You know the quality of the leadership, to mention transparency, frankness, and all these kind of things, mm -hmm. has to be there. You don't come as a leader without a vision. Without a program, without a roadmap, without a milestone. I tell you something happened to me on a smaller scale. In 1985, I was elected to become the president of the uh, National Union of Egyptian Students in UK. Mm -hmm. This was 1,000 plus. Uh, uh, Students, students mm. postgraduate students, master and PhD. I was not uh, uh, sponsored by the government. They wanted to take me. The government did not like it. In London. Said, you are not paid by us. You are an independent student. How can you become the president of the union? I said I was elected by 93%. So no, I can't control you. You have to be removed. Exactly and bluntly like this. It's 1985. How many years now? Maybe 40 years. I said if you want to remove me, you have to have another general uh, meeting. I said no, no, can't. You meet together. And the executive committee should remove you. What happened at that time? I had a plan to put forward on the table before the executive committee. So when I came to the, have the meeting in London with the executive committee, I already had a plan. The executive committee agreed on the plan. So, instead of the executive committee removing me, they wanted to implement the plan. 
The plan was to make Hajj trip, to make trip to Paris at that time, to produce uh, what they call it, uh, magazine, a student magazine called uh, the Egyptians. Number four, to uh, make this Quran competition during Ramadan. Four activities during the first six months of the year. Everybody was excited. When we came to sit down with the authority in London, he told everybody, you have to remove him because he is not sponsored by the government. When we came back, he said, uh, we are going to have an extended session because he threw us out of the office and we went down into the cafeteria to say that we are going to carry on because there was a plan. If there was no plan, the public would never trust you. So make the public to be busy implementing your plan. Otherwise, the public will make their own plan and make you busy to implement one million plan. This is different. That's why a community leader or a political leader has to be ahead of the community by putting the plan on the table. You make the proposal, people will discuss it. You don't make the proposal, you will discuss the proposal. This is where we come with these several eight steps. Okay, if you don't like it, discuss it. So they will amend your plan. But if you go with no plan, they will make you to discuss their own plan. Learn, learn, learn to put your plan on the table, to be discussed, not to be discussing the plan of others. It's what you learn. If you don't learn that, we will never be able to build community. We will never be able to build society. We will never be able to go forward to develop anything, because we have no plan. And we only will discuss the plan put on the table by others, before us. And remember, when you make your plan in negotiation, in negotiation, if you want to achieve three points or five points, put 10, 15 points. Don't make three and five points. <laughs> you got it? Suppose that you want to achieve three, four, five, six objectives. Don't put the five objectives, make them 15 or 20. So when the discussion happens, you become hard on the five that you want them to keep them. If you want three out of five, is sixty percent. If you want four out of five, is four eighty percent. But in their eyes, your eighty percent will be four of twenty. Ah, we won! It's only four out of twenty. <laughs> Don't play games. <laughs> but so try to increase. The number of points when you discuss in a negotiating table. Three points, put 15. Four points, put 25. To try to make it difficult for them to reduce the 20, 25. Not that say, ah, my God, we lost. No, we went to 10 of 20. And out of 10, the five of them is 100% for me. This five of the twenty-five is hundred percent for me. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, Don. I want you to become to look at it as community builder. Mm -hmm. You know when we talked about the donkey, the musaharati, the wake-up caller, the blending mixer, the community builder. Because this is not a job. We are dealing with the resources of community. We are dealing with the dream of community, we are dealing with the future of community, and we are dealing with the dream of community. Should be very equipped. Should be ready. That's why the more you mix with people and suffer and, and be patient on the suffering they give you, the more you become a stronger community builder.
stronger great leader but you have to mix 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 but that's why the prophet said al muslim الذي يخالط الناس وعزل على الاذان خير من الذي لا يخالط الناس وعزل على الاذان the muslim who mixes with people and be patient on their hardship to him or her is far more better than the one who does not mix and does not become patient on the hardship they give to him. The more hardship you receive, the more thick skin you have. The more backstabbing. Backstabbing does not break your back. It strengthens your back. I remember seeing one of the Egyptian farmers who were sitting in a meeting and he was doing like this. You know my legs, my feet? And he was trying to touch his sword. No shoes. You know what? He just found something here and pulled it out. You know what he pulled out? A nail. A nail. A nail which is a nail, not the nail which is a nail. Not this, not this nail. A, a, a metal nail. About two centimeters. He did not feel it because the skin has become very thick. He used to walk with no shoes for 20, 30 years. So all this skin here are dead. So when the nail went in, he just seen some scratching. What's this? If it came to somebody like me, oh my God. Okay, the more you mix, the more you have thick skin. Good? Any, any questions? If that, if that happens, huh? if this happens, you develop this thick skin, you become more resilient to be able to you know, lead projects in a certain yes. community. Would that then have an impact on your personal life? Here, you have to choose the right woman to marry you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why Prophet Hassan said, the beautiful, the good family, the wealthy and the religious. And they said, the religious one is the one which is good for you. Yes. Look at all the wives of the Prophet, how they were. All of them took the mission with them. That does not mean that there were no differences between them. But they took the mission with them. They said in the proverb, Behind every great man is a woman. The woman could be his mother, his wife, okay, and his wife. And the wife is the one who makes you successful. But if she cannot stand up for your mission, you cannot win. Because she'll be all, always pulling you back. But if you stood up for your mission, she'll be pushing you to go to help the people. That's why the choice of the partner or the woman or the wife is the most important in the history of a community builder or a political leader. She is the cornerstone of your success. Your mother is the cornerstone of your success because she nurtures you. Clear? And when she is with you, when you leave from the community, she will comfort the children. Mm -hmm. You'll be patient on your absence. She will be playing the role, your role, when she is sitting with the children or with the neighbors. Because she believes in your mission. Don't try, don't marry the beautiful. Don't be do 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 do. Be be boo boo. No, the be boo boo do 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 do. She will be be boo boo do 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 for everyone. Because she'll be, ah, she's beautiful. Mm. No, no, no. Get the one who's, she could be a beautiful woman, but knows the mission. It's not haram to marry a beautiful woman. It's halal. But a beautiful woman which knows the mission, not a beautiful woman which has her own mission. Those Facebook sisters nowadays, Bismillah, mashallah, thank you. Give them away. <laughs> you, got, you got it? Look at my nose, look at my cheek. So what do you call it? Patuk, patuk? What do you call this one? Motox. Huh? Motox. <laughs>
even you know in 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 Arthur, yeah, Arthur, and the second one which is the what's the son called Osman. You get a woman who's perfect. You get a style of what you call it beard, fashionable of the 21st century. You know the second when you look at Osman. What is this? Where did it come from? Even Osman himself on his own is a very short beard. There was no barber at that time. Everybody was trimming him by by knife, even not by by scissors. And you get Osman, Osman, which is the founder of the Ottoman Empire, with a beard shorter than your beard. Oh my God! They forgot about that. Actually, this was 700, 800 years ago. So this is for you when you build. Any question regarding this? We talk a lot about building communities, but sometimes because you need, we need each other. But sometimes getting the community together is the challenge itself. Yeah, I'm telling you, my job in a material world forum is more difficult than my job as a CEO or president of a summit. Building community is far more difficult than implementing a project. Because you are in charge with the project. But with the community, you cannot be in charge of everyone. You have to talk to this, to this, to this, to this, to this. You have to be patient. Somebody might give you the answer on the right date. And you have to go back to them. So building community is more difficult. More difficult, more difficult. Sometimes become extremely difficult than making a program implemented by your own organization to be hundreds of millions of pounds. That's why in building community, you have to bring them on the simplest and the easiest idea first before you start talking about the bigger thing. That's why if we talk about vocational training, primary state education, uh, local market, it's simple. If you talk about constitution from day one, oh my God, everybody will fight. Because it becomes theoretical. Choose the easiest and the fastest with the impact. Then once they start to work together, Step two, step three, step four, step five. Yeah. Uh, what about the document that you sent us about regarding Zakia? This is after break. So after break. Sure. Sure. After you make coffee for all of us. Any other question about this one? No? So let us take a break for half an hour, at least you refresh yeah. and make more coffee for us. Then we can go to the cat position. And tomorrow we have all open discussions. Sure. Okay? So who is going to be the good coffee maker? Me, of course. <laughs>